Hey everyone, we're finally able to get out and explore Alaska again, so we've decided to make a series of videos uh, on our search for the best place to camp in Alaska. For our first trip, we plan to take a vacation down to Homer, Alaska, and we are staying right on the Spint. So we've been down to the Kenai Peninsula before, but we went down the east side, we went down to Seward. Uh, we love the area. What's your favorite part? I absolutely love the Russian River area. It is so blue and like so kind of tealy green, kind of close to the color of my shirt. It's some water that you cannot miss out on if you have the chance to get up here. Oh, I totally agree. I, I would have originally said like Denali was my favorite part on the drive, but uh, uh, I would have to agree that the Russian River, the, the color of the water down in Kenai Lake and the Russian River is absolutely amazing. Where is your favorite place to camp at? Yeah, tell us down in the comments where your favorite place is to camp and uh, take your family for vacations. Well, I think it's time to get going on this trip. We hope you guys enjoy the video. reservation for Homer isn't for another three days but we're able to leave a few days early so we're gonna head down and look for a place to stay on the way Please. 551 miles is a good start to the trip that'll get us down right to the middle of the Kenai Peninsula this map's going to give you a ballpark area of about where we're heading and uh, where we're going to look for our first camping spot. We're not actually planning on making it all the way here. We're planning on finding a place on the way. Well, let's get going. major landmark we'll hit is the Denali National Park. Denali is about 158 miles from Fairbanks or about a two and a half hour drive by car. I don't want anything left untried. Will you come with me, This is just outside of Healy. That's the closest town to Denali at about 10 miles away. And I'd stop thinking of this over. Just do my love and see where this road will take us now. Denali Park and the surrounding preserve are over 6 million acres. Denali is the tallest mountain in North America, stretching up into the sky over 20,000 feet. A fun fact about Denali is that its vertical relief, that's the distance from base to peak, is over 18,000 feet meaning it is the biggest mountain in the world, just not the highest elevation. Shout out to our friend Jason for all those aerial shots. Our next landmark on our trip is Wasilla. About 193 miles away, Wasilla is the sixth largest city in Alaska. Wasilla has a population of about 11,000 people and sits just on the northern tip of the Cook Inlet. Our next stop is Anchorage, only 45 miles away. At just under 300,000 residents, it's Alaska's most populated city. It contains nearly 40% of the state's population. Due to its location, Anchorage sits almost equal distance from New York City and Tokyo. A fun fact about Anchorage is it lies within a nine-hour flight of 90% of the industrialized world. Weather Channel it said we had about a 20% chance of rain. It looks like down here on the peninsula it's going to rain for about 20 days straight. So um, hopefully we get some good weather in the next couple days. Uh, but we'll show you uh, we'll show you what it's looking like. I've never been known for my cautious side. I know the wind that I stir. 
Hey everybody, one thing we didn't go over was that uh, we don't have a place to stay for the next three days and we've already driven about 500 miles. Uh, all the campgrounds are already booked that can be booked, but there are a bunch of uh, campgrounds apparently that uh, are first come first serve. So we're hoping that because this is Sunday, uh, people are going back to work and there's gonna be a couple, uh, a couple spots open, at least one. Um, so uh, that's what we're looking at so far. The distance from Kenai Lake to Skilak Lake is about 25 miles, so we're hoping to make that our final destination. So we found a spot at Lower Ski Lack Campground. This campground has no hookups, no water, sewer, no electric, uh, but we did bring a generator with us. It's a free campground and it has three spots that will accommodate a travel trailer that's over 30 feet. When we arrived, it was really windy for about 30 minutes and then it died down. Once the wind died, it really showed how amazing this lake really was. We really found a gem here. I couldn't believe there was nobody else around. You should definitely come with me because just in case. Ten o'clock at night right now. Blake's out kayaking. I can't wait to see it in the morning. The water color and clarity is just absolutely mind blowing. pretty good sized little town or city I guess you'd call it um, they have a sportsman's warehouse and uh, full-size like grocery stores and uh, so they've got everything that you'll want to uh, everything you'll need if you're down in this area um, so right now we're headed out to uh, Kenai City and uh, maybe we'll check out the beach while we're there all right we'll show you all right here is the beach access in Kenai. Uh, so let me see if I can flip this around here. That's the bay there. Nice windy day, probably, I don't know, 55, 60 degrees, uh, but it's a really nice day.
We're so sad to be saying goodbye to Skilak Lake, but we do have to move on to our actual intended location, Heritage RV Park on the Homer Spit. Homer's only about a 70 mile drive and we're excited to get on the road. The whole area is beautiful, so we're ready to see something new. Uh, right now we're heading down the west side of the Kenai Peninsula, right, west side. Um, over here, the we're heading down toward Homer. Um, the vegetation is super, super thick and green. Um, it reminds me of like, I don't know, central or northern California coast um, by maybe like Bodega Bay area. Uh, it's really, really pretty in this area. Homer feels like it's split into two different areas. First you have Homer the city, where all the locals live and run their daily lives. And then as you get closer to the spit, it starts feeling a little more touristy, it gets a lot more crowded. But even though we were basically camped in a parking lot, it was just a one-of-a-kind experience camping right on the spit. Some of you don't know this, but when you catch a fish that big, you can't just go fishing the next day. You gotta take a break, let someone else try to catch one of those, and really just wind down. In the morning, we got up and explored all over the spit. It's a really awesome little area with just about any shop you could think of. We really use this day just to relax and hang out and explore the spit. Try to remember this is a vacation and not just a time to show off your expert fishing abilities. Then I started thinking back to yesterday when I said you should use this day just to wind down. So we took that to heart and went to the local winery. It's a winery that makes fruit wines from fresh Alaska fruit. It's an amazing place and the staff is great. We definitely recommend swinging by if you're in town. Gavin and I decided we'd go out and spend the day fishing. You couldn't ask for a better day. We spent the first part whale watching while the crew was prepping all the gear. The scenery off the coast of Homer is absolutely amazing. Once the fishing started, it definitely didn't disappoint. They say you can't fish off the coast of Alaska without having a great story. This trip definitely didn't disappoint. We ended up hitting a large log in the water. It was submerged just enough so that we couldn't see it. The captain reacted really quick and avoided major damage by swerving. Unfortunately, it was enough to take out one of the props from the engine and uh, we started taking on a little water. The captain was able to repair it just enough so that we could limp back on one engine. What that meant was instead of a one hour trip back, we were looking at almost a four hour trip back. So yes, oh, oh, Brad, Brad hit something there. <laughs> The good news is everybody made it back safe, the boat didn't sink, and we have our offshore Alaska fishing trip story. On the plus side of this, the extra long trip back gave us time to plan our next day's adventure. Uh, we decided to take a boat across the bay from Homer and spend the day hiking up to a glacier. All right, stick with us here and we'll see if this hike is worth it. Wake's first adventure. <laughs> What are you doing? We 
took about a 40 minute water taxi ride to our destination across the bay. Here we are, uh, getting ready to hike Glacier Spit. Say hi, guys. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so we just got dropped off on the beach. We had to get dropped off about a quarter mile out from where we needed to be because the tide's too low. Um, but we'll, we'll show you some of the trail. an amazing hike. The forest is thick and green and just beautiful everywhere. There's a little tram here that we're going to go on. ride was about a two mile detour so now we're walking back from that uh, good bit of exercise I think it's kind of heavy when you're pulling back uphill um, now we're heading back to the uh, the Y and the trailhead so we can continue on to the glacier hike to the glacier and check out this view. out here not too bad uh, for Blake that was a uh, little much for Blake but now we have to catch the uh, water taxi on the way back so uh, we have about an hour about an hour and a half to get back down there uh, to the coast so we can catch that water taxi all right we're just gonna take one last minute to soak it all in and enjoy the views before we start our hike down There's my bay. Oh. See? Check out that view. Mom's still working on her booty hose. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we might have made it to the top. there. Here's the bay. Check that out.
us up about 15 minutes early. Here are a couple of quick pictures of views as we're leaving Homer. Hello everyone. What an amazing trip. Our surprise stop at Skilak Lake was absolutely awesome. It really was. We really appreciate all of your guys' support and we hope that you like the video and keep on watching.